And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Anytime you're talking about fundamentals in a market and direction, fundamentals take a little bit of time to play out. We got crude oil today, kind of trading yesterday's value area really nicely, low to high. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trade routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good afternoon and welcome to the Market Recap. I'm John Hoagland. Sitting in for handsome Dan Hodgman. It's Wednesday, September 1st still. Thanks for trusting me with your time. Hope you had a uh, good trading day, as always. That's what we're hoping for. And uh, we had uh, some interesting things happen. Uh, we uh, you know, we had crude take a dive to the downside uh, uh, and then recover most of uh, most of those losses. We have the NASDAQ. Putting it all to all-time highs in the regular trading hour session. S and P's didn't quite do that. Uh, OPEC apparently is keeping uh, its output boost in place, so I think that's got a lot to do with the knee jerk to the downside uh, from crude oil. But prices seem to recover pretty well. Uh, gold uh, failed to accept above that bull flag. We've got a bull flag above a bull flag under a bull flag. Uh, so far, unable to break out and hold above it. Uh, the Euro uh, is still wrestling, uh, having quite the wrestling match with weekly kickoff high. And the uh, the tenure had a, a pretty good knee-jerk reaction to the upside after the ADP number came out this morning. And it really just uh, kind of flat ranged the rest of the day. Um, you know, as far as other news is concerned, uh, everybody is, I'm sure, talking and thinking about for the next couple of days on uh, the unemployment number due out because uh, private payroll is really disappointed today. Uh, we talked about that on the forecast this morning and it uh, didn't really seem to affect the equities too much. And I'm seeing news that uh, McDonald's is hiring 14 and 15 year olds to combat the uh, labor shortage and uh, Apparently, TSA, everybody's favorite uh, uh, airport protection uh, agency, has said uh, screening has dropped. Travel is starting to fall again due to the Delta virus. So we've got all that going on. Uh, good afternoon, Adnelson, Vince, Ricardo, Tim, Bill, Ainge, and NM. Dan gets better looking every week. <laughs> I will certainly tell him that you said that, uh, and uh, had a uh, I think a really good uh, group session, group coaching session today. Uh, again, if you were there and I didn't get to your question, I am so sorry about that. Um, you know, we uh, I always take the emailed in questions first, and you know, Fred's questions I thought were very important, very good information for everybody moving forward. So. Uh, we'll try and get through more of them next time. You can always email in your questions so I can get set up for them before then. And we'll look forward to next Wednesday. Uh, also, next week, we're starting some futures kind of classes. I don't know. These are things that we did uh, when we used to have a Squawk Radio uh, Tuesday because Monday's Labor Day. Nobody should be working on Labor Day on Monday. But Tuesday at 1230, I'm going to have a, a webinar that's going to basically be the, uh, the history of futures trading, why it started, when it started, how it started, and some interesting information about how Top Step uh, has had a pretty, uh, pretty close connection with, uh, with some of the history in futures trading. And then, of course, you know, we get uh, more information Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then it'll start on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, always at 12.30, hopefully when the markets are slow and you got a little bit of time to join me. You know, I look forward to uh, having the opportunity to spend even more time with everybody, which is something that I, that I truly, uh, truly enjoy and I hope you find useful as well. Um, I guess 
we can jump into the charts and uh, just kind of look at what the markets did. Maybe talk a little bit about what we were thinking and talking about this morning. We uh, start with the crude. I've got the 30-minute chart up here. We've got uh, what we were talking about this morning. I mean, Sunday's range has been the range for the entire week until, of course, today. We have uh, we were talking about this on the open. If we were going to be fading extremes of this or accepting uh, or going with acceptance outside of it, and boy, there was a pretty swift acceptance down below that level probably largely due to the information from OPEC. Uh, but it really recovered very nicely. Um, and it looks like we, we've actually got to close back inside this triangle, uh, slightly rising triangle. So uh, we're going to have to look and see. This may offer us another opportunity tomorrow. Um, let's see here. Um, I wonder how the volume volume looks like it was... Looks like it was pretty good today. Take a look at the daily here. So, yeah, we did uh, bring in some volume on this uh, knee-jerk and turnaround. Again, it'll be another interesting day for us tomorrow. And the E-mini S&Ps. Yeah, well, let's start the day, uh, the day time frame on this. We're kind of looking at, you know, this morning wrestling with weekly kickoff high. The absolute high from last night was weekly kickoff high. 4540 we have still an overnight all-time high in the S&Ps we were on, we were unable to take that out today take a look at the 30 minute chart we were talking earlier uh this this morning on the forecast and everything about how we were seeing some delta divergence in these markets in well in, in the S&Ps at least indicating possible accumulation of longs and longer time frame they didn't get paid today they may be protected a little bit they this market really attempted and labored really to try and put in this high our overnight high again weekly kickoff high our 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 um, extended trading hour all time high, unable to reach it, just really kind of bringing value slightly higher. The volume, I don't think, was probably all that great today. Taking a look at the daily, yeah, uh, just as exp just as suspected, we had some pretty low volume today as the market digests and awaits more information. We get jobless claims tomorrow and unemployment on Friday. So, markets, traders. Hedgers all positioning themselves for what may come on Friday. Okay, the NASDAQ, uh, you know, had a pretty good up move here. We did not close the gap relatively early. It took us all day to close the gap. It has us looking for opportunities to the upside. The market took out the overnight all-time high, could not reach weekly kickoff high. Uh, within basically a... A point of big fat round number 15,700, if that's a big fat round number, and then coming off pretty pretty severely, finally coming back to close the gap after the close. Ah, uh, these markets. Oh, these actually, it wasn't even after the close, it was on the close. So, again, we're still kind of bringing value higher. SP is still indicating, you know, potential. Long still coming into the market. Watch the opening, opening uh, the open interest tomorrow in the S and P's and in the Nasdaq. Maybe see a little bit of profit taking near the end of the day today, which could lower open interest. Gold, uh, another interesting one here. So this is what we're talking about. We've got a bull flag that broke out to the upside into another bull flag, which broke out to the upside, which has created another bull flag. We are unable to break out above that today. Uh, it's going to be another challenge to see what we can do with that tomorrow. Here is today. We had a pretty good uh, attempt to find acceptance above the top trend line of this most recent bull flag, which was rejected. We're back inside the bull flag. Doesn't mean this can't be, can, this can't continue to be 
an, an attempted um, acceptance above that tomorrow or overnight. Uh, just the fact that it got that deep into it says, you know what, our sellers up here may or may not be all of that all that aggressive. The market really got pretty deep through there. So testing last week's high. In the 30, uh, the uh, euro okay, had broke out you know, Friday, pretty decent volume. Seeing the market continuing to one time frame higher on the daily chart. In other words, every successive low is higher. Every successive high is higher. And uh, now wrestling with weekly kickoff high. This is stage one breakout of a market state. We get up above this and we accept. I, I would expect that that's going to change market state from range bound or downside to upside. And here's our weekly kickoff high. The market opened. Did not necessarily leave the opening range to low of the session today. I think we took a little bit of, of a look below it before finding some legs to the upside. Of course, this is you know something that's uh, that is affected by. I got this on the wrong th number there. This is a this was a, of course affected by um, the uh, ADP number this morning, uh, and you know kind of looking like we're pretty much. Closing right on weekly kickoff high. A little bit magnetic here. Be careful with that tomorrow morning. And so the uh, tenure, you know, we're kind of looking at uh, the market holding some overnight shorts here. London session, we kind of took those back. Uh, ADP, we had a pretty good knee jerk reaction. I was kind of thinking about a, a you know a potential rejection of value from yesterday, which the value area special situation play wouldn't even have been worth trying today. The market kind of came up and uh, has has value outside of yesterday's very narrow area of value. Uh, you know, I'm looking at this 10 minute chart, looking at what happened today. You know, looking at the uh, yields and tenure, everything seems to be on hold until. The, they start to come up with some sort of expectation as to when the uh, buyback um, program is going. They're going to start to to slow down on that. So I think a lot of hurry up and wait in our treasuries, at least so far this week. Um, Justin, I see your question here. Uh, I'm sorry, ELT. I see your question here. You still offering one-on-one -on -one coaching? Uh, I am, but unfortunately, right now, it is full. Um, we think if you go on the website, you can uh, you can put yourself on a waiting list. God, it really pains me to say that. I would really love to be able to help more people, but you know, it's there's only so much of us, and and uh, I, I don't want it to. You know, I want everybody to that that, that I work with to feel like. They are important to me, and and trust me, they are. So ELT, just get on the on the on the waiting list if you'd like to, uh, and I will look forward to working with you soon. Uh, all this recorder in case I have to go to work. No, Jerry, we don't. Well, the market forecast and recap are of course recorded. You can see them on our YouTube channel anytime. Uh, Justin, can you look at NQ for us? Well. Let me see if I can. Uh, it's not a product I'm I'm typically focusing on, um, Justin. If you'd like, I can start to kind of look at it in the coming days here, and I know that there's a lot of people interested in it. Maybe we can add it to the forecast here. If I take something off, or um, I will look to add it. Uh, I don't really want to look at it today because I haven't had the opportunity to uh, acclimate myself to any any of the things that I'm going to be looking for. I gotta, I've got i got to read into it a little bit before I want to comment on anything. Um, but yeah, Nat Gas, I, I got you. You know, it's not a product I'm usually focused on. So I don't want to do any kind of knee-jerk reaction or comment on it until I do some research on it. 
Um, I will, you know, consider adding it to the market forecast, but, you know, look maybe for, um, yeah, net gas. We already do the NASDAQ, but I'll look to add the NASDAQ or the uh, net gas. I just said it myself. Maybe I was saying it. I don't know. Kind of tired today. Um, it's a long day. Uh, but I will, I'll look to add it for you. Um, give me some time to research, get familiar with it and its personality a little bit. And we'll take a look at it from time to time here on the forecast and on the recap, if that's something you'd like. But again, I don't want to just jump in and say, well, this is this and that is that, um, without having some opportunity to really kind of research it. So we'll, we'll talk about adding that on here as, as time goes on. <laughs> All right. Uh, what happened on this day in history? Uh, let's see. September 1st, 1972, and what is billed as the match of the century, American chess, ma chess grandmaster Bobby Fischer defeats Russian Boris Spassky in the World Chess Championship in Reykjavik, Iceland. I actually remember this. Because I'm that old. It was a big deal. Uh, September 1st, 1985, the wreck of the Titanic is found. And, uh, you know, three decades later, it was act of a movie. Uh, 1964, the first Japanese player makes his Major League Baseball debut. In 1775, King George refuses the Olive Branch Petition. Some some uh, revolutionary war. And it looks like uh, all the fun stuff. And on this day in music, let's see what happened. Uh, all right, 19, 1933, Conway Twitty is born, if you guys know who that is. 1966, I had a GTO, a 1966 Pontiac GTO. And uh, the Who had a single, I'm a Boy, that entered the UK chart, peaking at number two, giving the band their second number two hit. In 1967, I don't know how that's how they know that's today. We're not going to talk about that. Anybody remember the Osmonds? The Osmonds were number one on, on the UK singles chart with the Johnny Bristol song, Love Me For A Reason. Nineteen fifty seven, Gloria Estefan's birthday today. Yeah, it's all the. That's about all the fun stuff. Sometimes there's things on here I don't even know. 1977, Blondie signed her uh, first major record company contract on this day. If you remember Heart of Glass? Actually, a, a song that I, I hated at first, but now I love it. Now, I, you know, 80s music wasn't. Was, I didn't like 80s music. I was too Led Zeppelin. 1988, Fleetwood Mac ended a nine-month tour with a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. And at the end, Lindsey Buckingham announced on stage, this is our last show for a long time. I think I saw them the very next year at Alpine Valley. <laughs> That's a long time, I guess, huh? Right. Yeah, artificial intelligence is the grandmaster now. Holy cow. All 
right. All right, I'm going to uh, gonna go rest up now. It's a long day. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday. Jobless claims, unemployment on Friday. Lots to look forward to. Uh, we should see Dan bag for the market recap tomorrow. Make sure you tell him he's handsomer on Daisy's not there. <laughs> and uh, I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning on the market forecast. Get some rest tonight. If you're trading tonight, make sure you uh, keep your powder dry for tomorrow. And uh, we'll look for the opportunities. Again, same bad time, same bad channel, same, same time. Market forecast. Until then, get some rest, be good to each other, say a prayer for world peace. Blessings, everyone. Have a great night.